Hello, Caroline here. Oh, this is my room. As you can tell, I love space. It is so amazing. Every night I look out of my telescope into our solar system. I can see the stars and the moon, and sometimes I see other planets. My favorite planet is Earth. I can't see it from my telescope, of course, but there is no planet as amazing as this one. Earth is the only place that scientists have found that can support life. It is often called the living planet because it is home to around 300,000 plant species and 10 million animal species. It is also called the blue planet because it is an ocean planet. It is the only known planet to be covered with liquid water. And when I say covered, I mean covered. Around 70% of Earth's surface is covered with water. Now that I have your attention, let's talk about what we will learn in today's lesson. Yes, that's right. I have barely scratched the surface on all of the amazing facts about Earth. Today we will describe Earth as a planet and explain how the systems on Earth connect with the solar system as a whole. So come on, let's get in orbit. Earth is a terrestrial planet made of rocks and metals with a hard surface. Terrestrial planets are planets like Earth that don't have many moons. They have a molten, or super hot, metal core. And they have land features like valleys, mountains, volcanoes, and craters. Earth is a unique terrestrial planet because it has lots of liquid water. Remember how much is covered in water? Yes, 70% of Earth is covered by water. The rocky features and bodies of water that make up our planet's surface are always changing. Wind, water, and ice cause the land to change very slowly over time. Events like volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, and landslides cause the landscape to change quickly. So, what causes all these earth-changing events? Well, a lot of these changes happen because of what's going on below the surface. So let's take a closer look at the layers within planet Earth. The core is the most inner layer, and man, is it hot in there. Like 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit hot. What? The inner core is solid metal, but not the outer core. This layer is molten, which means it's like a thick, hot liquid, and it is slowly moving. Scientists believe the inner core is growing just a little bit all the time, which affects the movement of the outer core. The next layer is the mantle, the thickest layer of Earth. In fact, it makes up around 85% of Earth's total volume. The lower mantle is made of a mix of partially molten rocks, while the upper mantle is made primarily from a rock called peridotite. Amazingly, this layer is also in a constant state of motion because of the hot pressure coming up from the core and cooler pressure pushing down from above. Scientists believe that this movement, called thermal convection, is what directs the circulation of our next layer, the crust. The crust is the top and thinnest layer of the Earth. It's the part that we can directly touch and steady. The crust is split into plates called tectonic plates. These plates make up the Earth's surface. They are called continental plates on the land and oceanic plates under the oceans. These tectonic plates are always moving due to thermal convection in the mantle. When these plates move, it causes the events I mentioned before, like volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, and landslides. But Earth's layers are not the only thing that cause the Earth's surface to change. Water also plays an important role in shaping the Earth's land features. The Earth is covered in fresh water, like rivers and lakes, and salt water, like oceans. These waters move and erode the land over time. The water that falls in forms like rain and snow can change Earth's surface, too. We call this process the water cycle, and it causes the movement of water on Earth and in Earth's atmosphere. During the water cycle, evaporation occurs, where liquid water evaporates into water vapor. Then, condensation happens, when water condenses in the atmosphere to make clouds. Next, there is precipitation, when snow or rain falls back to Earth's surface. And lastly, there is collection, when the precipitation collects in bodies of water. The water cycle shapes Earth's surface over time, but that's not all it does. It also enables life. 
Every living thing on Earth's surface needs water to live. Water helps living things to decompose, or break down, and release a chemical called carbon back into the soil. Over time, carbon in the soil is compressed into sedimentary rocks. Water and ice can break down these rocks, turning them into sediment. Currents in the water can carry them to other places, changing the shape of the land and water on Earth's surface. In other words, the Earth just never stops moving and changing. The cycles that shape Earth's surface are all interconnected, and part of the reason for this is that the energy that drives Earth's various cycles comes from the sun. Thanks to this amazing star, the center of our solar system, all of these cycles have the energy to continue day after day, which keeps the planet in a state of balance. Let's see how the sun influences some of these cycles. See how our Earth is tilted? Well, this tilts is part of what causes our seasons, since certain parts of the Earth are closer to the sun at certain times of the year. Earth's tilt stays constant as the Earth rotates on its axis or center. This rotation causes day and night, which all living things depend upon. I know, I depend on a good night's rest. The moon keeps the Earth from wobbling too much, which keeps it stable as it rotates. This also makes our climate more stable, since it keeps the Earth's tilt and rotation from changing too much. I mean, we could have a climate where it's always freezing, or burning up like other planets. And just as the moon is orbiting around us, so the Earth orbits or revolves around the sun. The Earth rotating and revolving is what determines the climate and daily weather, including the wind direction, temperature, precipitation, and ocean currents. So yeah, thank you to the moon, Earth, and sun system. But the moon also has even more impact on Earth's surface. For example, it causes tides in the ocean. And no, tides aren't just good for riding the waves. The tides help remove pollution from the oceans, and they move around nutrients to the plants and animals in the oceans. Plus, as we know, the movement of the ocean shapes Earth's surface over time. See how all of the systems that shape Earth's surface are interconnected, and how they work together to make life on Earth possible? The Earth as a planet is both part of and home to a number of complex systems, all of which are constantly happening to continuously shape our world over the course of millions of years. So we have come to the end of today's lesson about our place in space. Don't forget to check out the engaging games and resources related to this lesson. And always remember, you are out of this world. Hey, hey.